What's up, my fellow earthlings and beings? It's Rod D, Orange Ninja News, making it do what it do. Yo, we back at it today, man. Um, I was looking at a news article about Pence, and I know Pence for being a truck rental place, and I always see they have rental trucks that people rent from them. And like if your uh, big rig is down or whatever, somebody had rent a truck. That's what, that's what I thought it was a all it was i didn't know pence also had a was a trucking company it's weird uh this article says pence logistics announced the anticipated acquisition of a nearly 100 year old chicago-based trucking company on monday while financial terms have not disclosed have not been disclosed pence logistics acquisition of black horse carriers and company is expected to close on december 31st of 2020 so they already did that the pence organization has had a long-standing and valued relationship with black horse carriers for many years said mark alton president of pence logistics this acquisition will be complementary to our existing portfolio of customers and industries within our dedicated contract carriage business. So they dedicated contract to carriage business. So they're already doing business with a uh, carriage already. So they just basically, they's, you know, doing a little buyout. And it says, we look forward to working with the <clears throat> Black Horse Carriers team on this acquisition and the integration of our operations. Black Horse Carriers was founded in 1925 in Chicago. Well, wow, that's a long time, man. <laughs> they started off way back in 1925 with the uh, Black Horse Carriers. That's good. You know how, they, uh, how we talk about generational wealth. You know, you have cats that are have a business, the business get booming, and then you pass it down onto your kids, and then your kids can pass it down onto their kids, and it stays within a within the family. And I'm pretty sure uh, a company like that, though, uh, Black Horse, it probably um, got bigger than that, bigger than just family owned, to where you know you get on the stock exchange and all the other good stuff. But let's see, uh, it says. Black Horse Carriers was founded in 1925 in Chicago and has provided services for the food and grocery retail, bakery, dairy, CPG, manufacturing, and automotive industries. They currently employ 4,000 people and operate a fleet of more than 2,000 trucks. Yeah, I see, uh, I've been seeing that Pence a little bit of everywhere I go, but I was, like I said, I was thinking Pence was just a truck rental like if my truck break down then i could rent one of them and uh work for a couple of weeks or something like that so yeah yeah that's pretty cool um yeah so that's the pitch thing and the next article i want to go to next is the one about um the pile up on i-40 in new mexico as it was just happened not too long ago and the article says, seven semi pile up shuts down eastbound I 40 in New Mexico. Part of a New Mexico interstate remains closed following an early morning pile up involving several semi trucks. Yeah, see right there, the way it could be seven trucks piled up, man. The only way that could be is, man, if you fall in too close and you just, uh, you know, you know when you're risking your life because you can, you can feel it. You feel nervous. You know you're doing something wrong. And nah, man, it, I, I try to give it plenty of space. That way, if the cats wipe out in front of me, I still got a little time to maneuver, pull over to the shoulder, or just straight up stop. You know, with the road conditions real bad, I go ahead and slow down, give myself plenty of room. This is when cats be in those real tight groups and racing with each other. Dudes riding side by side for the next 30, 40 miles, doing all that type of foolishness. You know, man, anything could go wrong. And when it does, boom, y'all all grouped together. Y'all going to wipe out together. That's how that one roll. That's why I'll be like, nah, he, he ain't get away from me. We ain't going to be riding in no little tight group together, man. So instead of one truck wiping out all seven at the same time, mm-mm-mm. 
Yeah, so I'm gonna get back into the story. I'll talk about it in a little bit, but uh yeah, let's start a part of a New Mexico interstate remains closed following an early morning pile up involving several semi trucks. The pile up began around three AM on December second in the eastbound lanes of I forty at Mile Marker one eighty one near Cedillo Hill, New Mexico. The Bernello County Sheriff's Office says that seven semi trucks are involved in a large crash. Uh, I-40 eastbound near the 181 and reports that several people are trapped in the wreckage. The cause of the crash and the number of people who are injured is not currently known. Which it is known now because this is an older news article from the December 2nd. And I had seen, uh, seen the, some of the video that people caught footage on their phones and stuff, man, but it was it was real horrific, nothing you really want to see, man. It was, it was messed up. And, uh, they said, they said that I-40 was closed from mile marker 175 to 181. So, dang, man. They had to close, uh, six miles of the interstate, so, you know, that backup was like a day long then, man. That was a crazy back up because you have uh people not knowing to keep lining up and lying on there cars just lining up for days you said they had heavy uh traffic backups mm -mm -mm. yeah that's ridiculous man that's why i always give myself plenty of room i ain't trying to ride in no uh thick pack of trucks man Cause they, you'll see it where a deer come out and dudes just riding side by side. Somebody go to try to hit the brakes or swerve or anything. Boom. It's automatically a wreck right there, man. I don't see why guys, guys be, uh, be riding all close together like that. Plus, when you're taught not to do it. I don't get it. Tailgating and all that. That's part of your training. You're taught not to tailgate. What? The, uh, I don't know, man. Just stupidity, man. But, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, that, that was that news article. And I remember, uh, yeah, I remember when that happened, seeing uh, seeing footage and stuff like that from people's cell phones and stuff that it was a uh, showing of it. And uh, yeah, now I got a the next article don't got nothing to do with trucking. I'm going to talk some of my uh, space stuff right now. All uh, right, the next news article I want to talk about is from the. Newspaper, The Atlantic, and The Atlantic is a nice little news organization. Check them out when you get a chance. And the article is by Marina Korean, and it's from December 1st, 2020. Uh, all right, well, we're going to get into the article then. Okay, the article name is The Galaxy Brain is Real. Which is, uh, <laughs> which is what? The galaxy brain is real. Like, the galaxy has a brain, and it's real. So the whole theory of the galaxy having a brain. And I'm like, isn't that what we saw in the Guardians of the Galaxy? You remember the guy's pops uh, was the actual planet? <laughs> That's just, oh, man. But actually, we're getting into some actual scientific stuff here, though, man. I was just stripping off the name of it. Looking at the long views from the Hubble Space Telescope might be good for you. In December of 1995, astronomers around the world were vying for a chance to use the hottest new tool in astronomy, the Hubble Space Telescope. Bob Williams didn't have to worry about all that. As the director of the institution that managed Hubble, Williams could use the telescope to observe whatever he wanted, and he decided to point, at, point it at nothing in particular. Uh, hold up, man. I got a little background on it. Yes, I had to pause the audio right quick. I'm out here in the truck working, of course, and I uh, had uh, another truck parking beside me making all types of hella noise. Hey, that's the thing about uh, being a truck driver slash YouTuber, man. You're going to have some uh, some background noise every now and then. Hey, it's part of the, hey, it's part of the, part of the game as far as uh, on the job working. And doing your thing, you're gonna have some background noise. Okay, well, hey, back at it, man. So, uh, so 
part was on was Bob Williams, and uh, Bob Williams is the director of the institution that managed Hubble and the Hubble telescope. So, huh. Bob has a uh, Bob has a good job. I would like to manage the Hubble telescope, man. They get to see all types of stuff, man. Okay, Williams' colleagues told him as politely as they could that this was an awful idea but williams had a hunch that hubble would see something worthwhile and uh, um awful ideas that uh you know just pointing it anywhere instead of saying um yo i'm gonna uh you know look in this particular area because of you know this or look in this particular area looking for this other planet that we uh discovered that time or whatever but he was like pointing it all over like hey I'm, i just want to see what I, what we can see man and come up with something new and of course, his uh, colleagues told him as politely as they could that this was an awful idea. But Williams had a hunch that Hubble would see something worthwhile. The, the telescope had already captured the glow of faraway galaxies, and the longer Hubble gazed out in one direction, the more light it would direct. So the Hubble telescope stared at the same bit of space nonstop for 10 days. Precious time on a very expensive machine, snapping exposure after exposure as it circled Earth. The resulting image was astounding. Some 3,000 galaxies sparkled like gemstones in the darkness. The view stretched billions of years back in time, revealing other cosmic locales as they were when the light left and began coasting across the universe. Hmm. So there you saw 3,000 galaxies. Man. Man, it's just a... Uh, just mess your mind up with it and make you understand that how small our planet is compared to space, which is infinite and just goes on forever. Not only are we not the only galaxy out there, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it's good that we think we're, you, we're unique, of course, because we're us. We, we should think that we're all that in a bag of chips, but at the end of the day, uh, Okay, it says, I still love looking at that image, Williams told me earlier this year, as Hubble celebrated its 30th anniversary in space. Hubble, the most powerful telescope in orbit, is still producing dazzling observations of targets near and far from the familiar planets of our solar system to the mysterious suns of other worlds. The mission might be one of the easiest scientific endeavors to, ma to maintain in the middle of a plague. When I visited Hubble's Mission Operations Center, and the I in the story is uh, is the author I told you about earlier, uh, Kareem. Okay, and it says, when I visited Hubble's Mission Operations Center in Maryland last December, only one person sat inside the control room. All the staff that was needed to manage the mostly automated telescope, and it would turn out three months later when the state reported its first COVID-19 case, the right number to avoid tangling with a virus that thrives in close quarters. Yeah, man. This is crazy. Okay, and uh, Hubble has quite a clear view of the universe from its perch in orbit, away from the atmosphere that warps and blocks cosmic light from beyond. Its, image, its images are, to use a very non-scientific word, pretty. You don't have to be an ast you don't have to be an astronomer or to know that the galaxy you're gazing at is called NGC two five two five in order to appreciate them. These images can serve as momentary distractions, small bursts of wonder, and they might even be good for the mind at a time when the coronavirus has shrunk down so many people's worlds. Hubble can still provide a long view, a glimpse of places that exist beyond ourselves. Imagine yourself at a scenic vista somewhere on Earth, such as the rim of the Grand Canyon or the shore of an ocean stretching out past the horizon line. As your brain processes the view in the sheer vastness, feelings of awe kick in. Looking at a photo is not the same, but we might get a dose of that when we look at a particularly sparkly Hubble picture of a star cluster. The experience of awe, whether we're standing at the summit of a mountain or sitting in front of a computer screen can lead to a diminished sense of self. A phrase psychologists use to describe feelings of smallness or insignificance in the face of something larger than oneself. Alarming is that 
As, lo- as alarming as that may sound, research has shown that sensation can be a good thing. A good shot of awe can boost feelings of connectedness with other people. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I mean, when you look at something big, like they said, as far as looking at the Grand Canyon or if you buy a giant mountain or something like that, you do get like a sense of awe. And that's kind of... And that's definitely what you get with, um, and you look up at the stars. If you go somewhere clear, like if you're out on the boat in the water, you can see the stars real good. Or in the desert, you have to go somewhere where you're not close to a city or in the middle of a city somewhere to really, to really enjoy the stars, man. But when you're too close to a town or a major city, you ain't, ain't going to be able to see it like that. And you'll definitely have that sense of odds just looking up at the sky, man. Okay, and uh, let's get back into the story. Some people do have the sense. Some people do have the sense when they're looking across millions of light years that are ups and downs are ultimately meaningless on that scale. Says David Yaden, a research scientist at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, and who has studied self-transcendent experiences, including in astronauts. But I think space images can also draw our attention to the preciousness of local meaning our loved ones people close to us to this earth it's not a leap that i think always occurs but i think benefits flow to people who do make that leap the experience is like miniature versions of the overview effect the mental shift that many astronauts have experienced after seeing earth as it truly is a gleaming planet suspended in dark nothingness precious and precarious Astronauts have put this feeling into some lovely words over the years, but few have described it as succulent as the Apollo astronaut Edgar Mitchell, who saw Earth from the moon in 71. You develop an instant global consciousness, a people orientation, and intense dissatisfaction with the state of the world and a compulsion to do something about it. Most of us are astronauts, and we never see the big picture quite like that on Earth. Photos from a giant orbiting telescope capturing the grandeur of cosmos are as close as we can get. The appeal of these images is durable enough that a website called Astronomy Picture of Day has been running since 95. Yeah, I see some of those pictures off of there, man. I mean, you see some, you see some weird stuff like. It was one picture with a, a cluster of uh, stars and planets and stuff. I mean, it's, it's just a gigantic, massive amount of space. But when you look at it from that distance, it had looked like a picture of a face, which is really crazy, man. I mean, you see some weird stuff out in space, like, yo, know, some of them pictures, man, they make you think, man. The year Hubble reached into a dark void and plucked out glittering treasures. That was in 95. The site looks just as it did 25 years ago, with no frills, times new Roman look of the early internet. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. So, I think what they're saying as far as the, uh, as far as the, the brain, the brain of the universe, I think they're just saying basically that I'm getting from the article, the brain of the universe will be the Hubble telescope because it's looking around at everything. And for the first time, we can actually see everything around us with this um, huge telescope that's orbiting the Earth. And before, you know, we can, you know, you only can see so much from the telescopes that's actually sitting here on the planet because of course lighting and everything else you got the clouds you got all types of variables so um you can see better with telescopes that's actually off the planet and that's actually in orbit and that's what i'm getting from the news article and that's that's a very beautiful article right there and uh if you're not just listening to the podcast and if you're watching on uh, youtube i added a few pictures from space where you can see 
Um, yeah, so very beautiful pictures, man. I mean, the Hubble uh, been doing this thing since 95, man, putting it down. So, um, and you can pull up uh, pictures from it on the, on the internet yourself. All right, well, that's going to be it for today, man. I got to get back at it, back on the grind. Yeah, these uh, I got to make these these chrome rims shine and get these wheels turning and burning and money earning. You feel me, yo? So I'll let y'all next week, cause you know we broadcast weekly. And as I usually say about this time, y'all be blessed and peace.